What's up guys? Welcome to today's video. We are now officially done with the third part of our big electrical system on our new travel trailer. So today we are going to do a quick walkthrough of all three steps and then Chris is going to go through some of the big appliances that we can now use while boondocking. This system is partially sponsored by our brand partners, Battleborn Batteries, and I just want to say a big thank you to those guys for changing our lives when we met them two and a half years ago. From our Airstream Interstate to our rooftop tent to now this 26-foot travel trailer, they have been with us, helping us make these off-grid adventures even more amazing. This space under the bed worked out perfectly to fit all of the batteries and the components except for the inverter. I'm gonna to try to keep this kind of a quick overview of the system, and then I'm still gonna do the three-part more detailed installation series and show you more exactly uh, the components I used and how I installed it. I did install this system myself, so you can see it is possible to DIY a large system like this. Um, I don't have any previous electrical or education or history on, on any of this stuff. I just learned how to do it myself through YouTube and friends and asking a lot of questions. We'll start out with the batteries right here. There's three Battleborn battery game changers. They're called the GC3 game changer. If you haven't seen them, they're fairly new. They've only been out for about a year, but the design on these things um, is just completely different than any, any other battery out there. So there's lots of options to mount them and uh, I really like them. And in my head, like I designed the space to kind of fit three of these perfectly with the components in the back and it actually turned out pretty well. So 270 amp hours a piece for a total of 810 amp hours uh, connected with big four aught battery cable. I tried to keep the system pretty simple. So it just has a big main fuse, a uh, big on off switch, positive bus bar back here and this large blue box in the back here is the smart solar charge controller for the 1200 watts of solar up on the roof the model is a 15085 which means it can handle 150 volts and it can charge up to 85 amps of power into these batteries and so far it is going great and then rounding out in the back corner here is all the negative side so the negative bus bar the Bluetooth shunt um, so I can monitor it with my phone. And then we also have a Serbo GX monitor back here, which is new to me. I'm still playing around with that, but basically that allows us to connect to our Wi Fi and you can monitor your system from anywhere in the world as long as you have an internet connection. Pretty cool. I haven't put together the installation videos yet, so if you have specific questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments and I'll try to include those in my installation video uh, to show you guys exactly um, how I did these. Underneath the bed on the floor is a hole where all the wires come through for the auto leveling on this system. So that's exactly how I brought in all of the 12 volt wires uh, from where the batteries were originally up on the tongue. So they just came up through the floor and then there's a, a pass through back here that allowed me to really just run all these cables and uh, get them tucked out of the way. The one component you don't see is the inverter. That's a Victron MultiPlus 3000. It's a roughly a 2400 watt inverter. And that is on the other side of this pass through here uh, on the outside storage. So far that's working really nice there. And I did have to drill a couple one and a half inch holes through the pass through so that I was able to run the wires, uh, the 12 volt wires here to the batteries. And then I had to run the AC wires from the pass through under the frame up inside of the uh, subfloor all the way to the fridge uh, towards the front of the coach. So the batteries will be part one of the installation videos. The inverter will be part two of the installation videos. And then up on top of the roof, which we just finished is 1200 watts of solar, which will be the last series in the installation videos. And then right behind this panel is where I installed our inline Hughes watchdog, which is a 30 amp surge protector. So when we are in the parks, um, that is going to protect us from low voltage 
high voltage power surges, as well as that thing being Bluetooth, which is kind of cool. So you can monitor it from your phone and it'll even uh, give you a, an alert if there's an issue. So we've done a few boondocking videos with just the batteries and the inverter, but this is our first time with the whole system complete. So I'm gonna let Chris talk a little bit about some of the large appliances that we're now able to use um, now that we're off grid and out boondocking. So before I jump into uh, sharing what we've been powering in here, I just wanna give a quick recap on prior to the solar panels being installed, what our bank was like then. So because we have so much battery power in our bank, we were able to go out and boondock for eight days. And when we left, we still had 30% power. And on that trip, we, we were using pretty much everything except for our super high powered items. But it's just a, a testament to show like how powerful the bank is on its own. And then I was really excited to get the solar power added on so that we could power the big items and I guess for me personally number one is my air fryer which I just started using a few months ago and it's just incredible I love it I've always wanted one I finally have one and I'm using and abusing it and on this specific boondocking trip we've been using it every day like three to five times so we're talking some serious minutes cranking on this I'll use it for breakfast lunch and dinner I'll use it separate for like a batch for Aaron and then a batch for me it's just great. It's about 1800 watts. So it does take a little bit of power to run. Um, some of the cycles that I do are quick bursts, like three to five minutes. Others are long bursts, like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. It all depends on what I'm making. So this has probably been the biggest impact on what I've been able to power. Aside from that, I'm able to use my microwave. I do use that quite a bit because I like to food prep and reheat some food once in a while. So the microwave has been used multiple times on this trip. So besides that, uh, we've been running our propane heater all the time. It's desert, classic desert winter. The nights are 35 degrees. It's freezing when we wake up, so we crank it pretty heavily in the morning. That's about 100 watts. So on the grand scheme of power, it's not a lot of impact for our bank, but we are using it really, really heavily. Hair dryer. I'm not showering and washing my hair every single day, but when I do, I'm drying my hair. And we have been switching our propane fridge onto electric for about four to five hours every day in that high sun window, which obviously in the winter time is a very short window. So we're trying to take advantage of it when we have it and letting off of that propane. So the fridge we've been switching over, we're also able to use our vacuum. We aren't using the vacuum every day and it only takes a couple minutes to run through here, but we do have carpet in here and of course, RVs get super dirty, so you're constantly vacuuming, constantly sweeping to try to keep the dirt out. And finally, we did recently start to test out our water heater. Instead of doing the propane toggle, we will switch it to the electric toggle. And this is one of the last things that we're experimenting doing. It's 1500 watts and it heats 10 gallons in about one hour. So while all of those big powered units are really exciting and awesome to have, you gotta always bring up the bread and butter that keeps us going, the light bulbs, our laptops, our cell phones, just having those things we are using and abusing without even thinking about it. And I remember way back in our van before we upgraded, those were the simple things that we craved to just be able to pop a light on or charge our laptop and it's a big difference like now we have these capacity to run these amazing e equipments and you really got to just stop and go back to the basics and say well what about the lights and the stuff that you use every single day those are just as important like our radio our tv just things that make you feel like you're in a home again and those have certainly been off the charts So a couple quick stats about the system and how it's going for us. So our battery bank, which is 810 amp hours, uh, the most we've discharged it down to is about 70%. And then uh, the solar has actually recharged it back up to 100% twice. Uh, one day we left and went to the park here at Joshua Tree. And, you know, so we weren't using much power at all, but when we got back, it was charged all the way up to 100%. And then the next day it was charged as well, back up to 100%. So that's pretty amazing that it's actually charging that quickly. 
And that's a good point I want to make because this took me a long time to figure out why everybody said lithium charges faster than AGM batteries. I never really understood how that worked because AGMs can actually take more charge, like a, a larger amount of charge faster, but it has to do with the bulk absorption and float stages. And so lithium batteries can bulk charge all the way up to like 99% whereas AGM batteries bulk charge to 80%, and then to get it from 80 to 100, it actually takes a longer absorption and float stage, and so that can be like four to six hours, which in a short sun cycle in the wintertime, you just don't have that long. So all of the power that's coming from the sun right now is basically bulk charging those batteries, our lithiums, all the way up to 100%, which is pretty cool. Also some stats on the solar really quick. The highest uh, wattage that we've seen out of our 1200 watt max is 838 watts. So that was the peak that it hit uh, for the week so far. And this is in the winter time too. So that's really amazing because a lot of times in the winter, uh, depending where you're at, the sun angle is very low and you don't get that full peak wattage like you do in the summertime. And the largest yield we're getting for the entire day is about 3,000 watt hours or three kilowatt hours. And that basically means roughly 230 amps going back into the batteries, which is quite a bit. I would say on our low usage, we use about 100 amps per day. And then on a high usage, it could be much more depending on uh, what we're using. So we're hoping this system works even better in the summertime, which we know it will. And that way we're gonna be able to run the AC for a few hours a day and not worry about carrying a generator, which we don't have. So that's gonna do it for this video. Once again, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. We'll be putting out those three individual, more detailed videos very shortly. Also stay tuned for upcoming boondocking videos and we'll catch you on the next one.